LAV or light armored vehicle has been seen in the background of photos released by the Marine Corps aboard USS Boxer LHD4. The photo has been taken this week when members of the 11th Marine Expeditionary Unit were sailing through the Strait of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf. LAV is meant to be deployed for land operation and hence it is an interesting visual to see it on the deck of a US Navy warship. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why US military is deploying light armored vehicle in its warships to counter Iran's threat. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free to play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. There are several passages in the world's oceans that are narrow. The Strait of Hormuz is one of them. The Strait of Hormuz is a strait between the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. It provides the only sea passage from the Persian Gulf to the open ocean. It is one of the world's most strategically important shipping lanes. On the north coast lies Iran and on the south coast the United Arab Emirates and Muzandam, an exclave of Oman. At its narrowest, the strait has a width of only 21 nautical miles or 39 kilometers. Around 33% of the world's liquefied natural gas and almost 20% of total global oil production passes through the strait, making it one of the most important sea routes. Because of its narrow width, it's kind of a choke point. Small missile boats and fast attack vessels, which can maneuver easily in these waters, can be used to harass large warships as well as commercial vessels. Iran has strategized and implemented an asymmetric warfare plan to control the Strait of Hormuz. It's invested in these kinds of small vessels and has developed strategies to deploy them effectively in the strait. It's recognized that Iran has a decent flotilla of these vessels that can carry out operations in the strait on short notice. These boats carry short-range rockets, anti-ship missiles, and torpedoes. Iran's naval capability, especially its capacity to defend the strait, has been acknowledged widely. In a September 11, 2008 report, the Washington Institute for the Near East Policy said that in the two decades since the Iraqi-imposed war on Iran, the IRGC has excelled in naval capabilities and is able to wage unique asymmetric warfare against larger naval foes. According to the report, the IRGC Navy has been transformed into a highly motivated, well-equipped, and well-financed force and is effectively in control of the world's oil lifeline, the Strait of Hormuz. Tensions in the region escalated after the US government under President Trump unilaterally withdrew from Iran nuclear deal and imposed stringent sanctions against Iran. The deal offered Iran relief from sanctions in exchange for limits on its nuclear program. Trump administration is of the view that Iran is misusing the deal. Recent months have seen multiple spikes in hostilities which include the US accusing Iran for a series of attacks on commercial ships and Iran downing an American RQ-4A Global Hawk drone. In July of this year, USS Boxer had a face-off with Iranian drone. Jonathan Hoffman, Chief Pentagon spokesman, wrote, At approximately 10 a.m. local time, the amphibious ship USS Boxer was in international waters conducting a planned inbound transit of the Strait of Hormuz. A fixed-wing, unmanned aerial system UAS, approached Boxer and closed within a threatening range. The ship took defensive action against the UAS to ensure the safety of the ship and its crew. Iranians also seized a British tanker in the strait in July and two oil tankers were attacked in the nearby Gulf of Oman in June.
The LAV-25 light armored vehicle is an eight-wheeled amphibious armored reconnaissance vehicle used by the United States Marine Corps, the United States Army, and the Canadian Army. Powered by 6V53T Detroit diesel turbocharged engine, their four-wheel drive rear wheels transferable to eight-wheel drive. These vehicles are also amphibious, meaning they have the ability to swim, but are limited to non-surf bodies of water, no oceans, while engaged in amphibious operations. The maximum speed is approximately 12 kilometers per hour or 7.5 miles per hour using equipped propellers. Typical land speeds are approximately 100 kilometers per hour or 62.5 miles per hour in either four or eight wheel drive. The vehicles operate on diesel fuel. They're equipped with M242 Bushmaster 25 mm autocannon, two M240 7.62 mm machine guns, and two four barrel smoke grenade launchers located on the forward left and right sides of the turret. The crew is three vehicle commander, VC, gunner, and driver, and four passengers, scouts, with combat gear. The LAV-25 is a lightly armored vehicle. The base model is protected by light-gauge, high-hardness steel armor, MILA 46100, varying in nominal thickness from 4.71 mm to 9.71 mm. The armor can provide protection against small arms such as 7.62 by 39 mm rounds of AK-47. There are variants like the LAV-25, LAV-25A1, LAV-25A2. Major General David Kaufman, Director of Expeditionary Warfare, said last year that Navy and Marine leaders were coming up with innovative ways to defend ships in contested areas. Kaufman stated, I can tell you I watched an MEU commander strap a LAV to the front of a flight deck because it had better sensors than the ship did to find small boats. The LAV guys will sit up there. It's interesting to note that till this time, aircraft were used to counter emerging threats and Strait of Hormuz is not the only place where LAV is being used. Reports indicate that in September last year, members of the 31st MEU parked a LAV on the flight deck of the amphibious assault ship USS Wasp during a training exercise in the South China Sea. During the exercise, LAV's M242 chain guns and coaxial M240C medium machine guns were used to fire on dummy targets. For USS Boxer, also, this is not the first time a land vehicle has been positioned on its deck. Boxer's been equipped with Mattis. Marine Air Defense Integrated System, or MATIS, is developed to protect against threats of cheap and lethal unmanned aerial vehicles. The system was attached to an all-terrain vehicle and put on the deck. As per reports, the MATIS has been deployed starting June 2018. It's equipped with high-power sensors and jamming technology and disabled the Iranian drone when it got too close to the ship. New forms of warfare require innovative countermeasures. In July 1942, during World War II, Admiral Pound ordered convoy PQ-17 to scatter as there was a threat of German U-boats. HMS Ayrshire escorted three cargo ships to the edge of the Arctic ice to hide. One of the ships had a cargo of white paint and all had M4 Sherman's tanks as deck cargo. The crews broke into the cargo and painted their ships white to melt into the Arctic ice. They figured out how to use 75 mm cannons of Sherman's and train the turrets seaward. Though they didn't have to use the cannons, the idea was as innovative as it gets. Similarly, putting light armored vehicles in current Navy ships is an excellent way of countering asymmetric threats of Iranian boats. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.